Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, good night, whatever time it is for you <laughs> joining us. And thank you for uh, watching uh, one of our other live streaming. This time we are joined with uh, John White. Uh, and really grateful to have you, John, here. Um, I'm Rezorat. Uh, we run this like uh, uh, weekly live sessions. And John is. Uh, Together with Jason, he is one of the founders of VI Focal Show, which is a great, uh, like, podcast show. Like, they have, like, weekly episodes. <laughs> he will explain it himself uh, in much better way than I do. Uh, but I strongly recommend you to uh, go and listen to their podcasts. It's a fantastic job. They have, like, other um um, Power BI team members uh, podcasting with them like Will Thompson some others uh, I don't remember all of those uh, but I remember the one that I used to do <laughs> like a podcast as You've well. been up. <laughs> okay great uh, hey John how are you I'm well I'm well how about yourself I think it's it's, it's afternoon here it's got to be middle of the night over there am I right uh, it is actually early morning like okay, tomorrow. very early morning. Yeah, we okay. are living in the future. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Great. Uh, so I'll, I'll hand it over to you. Just one thing to uh, attend is if you have any questions, feel free to write it in the chat window. Uh, I'll let uh, John know about it uh, as he goes on in his presentation and we can have a good kind of conversation through uh, this. Uh, so... Up to you, John. You can do Ab the screen. Abso absolutely. Are we good there? You, you see the screen yes, just yep. fine? I can All see right. that. Excellent. Perfect. Excellent. Well, thank, thanks again for having me on. Uh, <laughs> as, as you're well aware, we're not getting out that much these days. So we kind of relish these opportunities to, uh, to connect with people. So um, it's much appreciated. And yeah, this is a, uh, this is a topic I originally wanted to, uh, I wanted to start talking about now, Jason and I, I sh sh should back it up a little bit. Jason and I have a bit of a running back and forth, and he, he says you should never use this particular feature that I'm going to talk about today. And I say it's appropriate in, in, in certain circumstances. So we're going to dive into why that is. That feature, of course, is uh, anonymous sharing. Um, and the title of the talk, of course, is Sharing Power BI Reports uh, with, the, with the World. So we're going to dive right into We're going to talk a little bit about general sharing as well, but uh, but specifically anonymous. Uh, you've uh, given me a bit of an intro just to expand on that a little bit. Uh, I'm the CTO and co-founder of a company. The company's name is actually Unlimited Viz, but we make a product we're kind of known by as Tigraph. And Tigraph provides analytics for uh, Microsoft 365. So if you're interested in any of uh, any of that stuff, please feel free to reach out to me. Uh, in fact, you're, you'll uh, you'll have an opportunity to uh, fill out a form here as we get going uh, to get this slide deck. Um, and I'll show you when it, when it, or I'll mention it when it first pops up. And there's a question on there. If you happen to be interested in that sort of thing, just check off yes, but otherwise check off no, and we won't bother you. Uh, we'll just email you a copy of the deck. But yeah, so th this is me. I'm the I'm the CTO and co-founder of Tigraph, as I mentioned. I'm a Office Apps and Services MVP. Have been for a long time. So read that as SharePoint. I come from the SharePoint world, uh, but for the last couple of years at least, I've been a uh, Power BI MVP as well, or Data Platform MVP. Those are my particulars. Uh, please feel free to uh, yeah, contact me if you got any questions about this after the talk. But if you have questions while I'm going on, uh, please ask them uh, in the in the chat area. Reza will break in. I've asked him if he could uh, just break in and ask me those questions on your behalf. I don't like leaving people stranded, so please feel free to ask away. Um, as mentioned, uh, uh, myself and Jason host a podcast called Bifocal. You can find it on all your favorite podcast aggregators everywhere. So I would encourage anyone to uh, give it a listen if you're interested in Power BI and what you must be if you're if you're here right now. Um, we cover the news of the day and uh, interview team members, et cetera, to find out where the product's going. Dive a little deeper into it than maybe a uh, than maybe a blog post could cover off. So for our agenda, uh, <coughs> excuse me, for our agenda today. And by the way, this is the first spot you you, uh, you can see those links down the bottom left hand corner of the slide. There's a URL in the upper right hand corner. There's a uh, QR code that you could, they take you to the same place. It's a form you can fill out. Just give us the particulars. The real important thing there is going to be your email address and you will immediately be emailed a copy of the slide deck. So if you want it, there it is. So 
We're going to talk in general for a little bit about sharing in Power BI and, and how that's structured and some of the different sharing options. And then we're going to dive into the five things you need to know about anonymous reports. Uh, the first thing is how to turn it on, essentially, um, and how to, how to maintain it. Uh, then we're going to look at a little bit of how you use it, um, as well as how to use a couple of uh, the other sharing capabilities. Uh, we're going to dive into the fact that publishing to the web is not secure. If you've not come across that concept already, you should probably walk away with that. We'll, we'll talk about exactly why it's not secure in that section. And then we're going to talk a little bit about how reports that are published anonymously are different and look different and work differently than reports published within directly or accessed directly within the Power BI service. Finally, we're going to uh, talk a little bit about data latency and some of the issues you run into there. So with no for further ado, Let's talk a little bit about sharing in Power BI. Now, sharing is a very important uh, concept in Power BI. It's the way licensing is structured. We're going to talk a little bit about licensing, and it's, I used to like to leave licensing talks to the very end of a presentation because if you missed it, you didn't miss much. But it's actually very important from a design standpoint to know why this you know exists the way it it does. Power BI licensing is all around sharing capabilities. So what we call today Power BI Pro or, or shared um, shared capacities um, are, 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 are um, what you pay for. Basically, they're all the sharing features that exist in the Power BI service. You could do in the service anything you want and have access to any of the features that do not pertain to sharing. As soon as it involves multiple people, um, that's, that's when you're going to require a license. So the free license, you can do whatever you want in your own personal workspace, test everything out. It's all great. But as soon as you want to share it with somebody else, uh, it's going to cost. Um, the joke is it's an awful lot like dating, right? You can do anything you want on your own, but as soon as you involve somebody else, it's going to cost you emotionally, monetarily, whatever it is. Anyway, I have no idea if anybody's laughing. I wish I did. But anyway, um, <clears throat> so how Power BI is structured uh, is in these shared capacities. And a capacity is really a, a unit of compute. So it's it's a combination of memory and CPU. Think of it like a virtual machine, right? Um, and then th th your data sets are stored in these various capacities. And these capacities can be shared between tenants and between workspaces. You really never necessarily know where your data set is going to be in the in the shared uh, uh, in in shared capacity. So here you see tenant A, tenant B, tenant C with various workspaces, and you can see the workspaces are spread out among different capacities. Um, and I'll just mention it here because it doesn't come up again. These are all essentially P2 capacities. When we get into premium and the sizing of premium, uh, it'll be important to know. But the shared the shared service is essentially running in a P2 capacity. And these are the things, if you're going to use a workspace that's not your personal workspace, you're going to need a pro license to access that. So uh, the Power BI team introduced the concept of premium capacities a few, a few years ago. And with premium capacities, you can purchase one of these units of compute at, at varying sizes. So. It's not a licensing model. You, can, you don't get Power BI premium that's assigned to a user. It's a capacity that's purchased for a tenant. The company buys it. And once the company buys it, you assign workspaces to it. And you know why wouldn't you want to just take all your workspaces and put them in your dedicated capacity? Well, you're going to chew up all of the resources that are available to your capacity. So you want to use that judiciously. Those resources are dedicated to you. You know that no one else is going to be uh, using them and you know what the performance is going to be like. And you can get past a number of the restrictions in Power BI because if you're running in your own set of compute and memory, if you do something wrong, if you run away with the with all of the compute cycles, you're not going to be affecting anybody else. So it's kind of like leasing a car versus buying a car. In this particular case, you're buying a car. If you're leasing a car, like the uh, Power BI, or renting a car, like the Power BI service, they put governors on there to keep you from, you know, essentially destroying the experience for every, everyone else. But if it's all your own, you can. So it's up to you to monitor it. But 
with that, they lift the one one gigabyte um, limit per, per model to 10 gigabyte, um, and it's coming up to uh, 400 gigabytes uh, very soon. I believe it's in preview right now. Uh, your, uh, your number of refreshes go from eight to 48 per day. And the big one, the most important one probably, and certainly from what we're talking about, is you can have unlimited sharing. So any reports I put in a dedicated capacity or a premium capacity can be shared with anyone and they do not need a license. I still need a license to publish it there, but the consumer does not need a, a license to see it. And it kind of looks like this. Now we have those same tenants. They've got those, those different workspaces, but they've purchased, uh, tenant A and tenant B have both purchased dedicated capacities and they've assigned specific workspaces to those capacities. And you can see that the data sets in behind the, the appropriate reports in these various workspaces are sitting in this dedicated capacity, but they can also still use shared capacities with different workspaces. That's how the licensing is structured. So essentially, if you want to share, you're either going, or you're going, yeah, your users are either going to need a pro license, or you're going to have to publish the report to dedicate a capacity. So let's talk a little bit about how you could share in Power BI. Uh, one th other way um, that doesn't actually require a license, but it's not recommended, uh, is to share using just a PBIX file, just like you could with an Excel file back in the day, or even today. Um, the PBIX file will only allow you to have uh, reports. So there's no such thing as a dashboard in, in, in a PBIX file. By the way, a PBIX file is what Power BI Desktop creates. Now, Power BI Desktop, even though it's called Desktop, it should be called Designer, is the design tool for reports that are to be deployed into the service. It's not meant to be a standalone uh, tool for people to use on their desktop. It contains the data cache. Um, it contains all of the queries. Uh, and it contains the reports. Uh, and if you want to refresh the data that uh, is, is in the uh, data models that are stored in the PBX file, you have to press the button refresh. There's no way to just schedule that. And it does, of course, require Power BI Desktop to be installed on people's machines. So if I was to hand you a PBIX file, you're going to have not only Power BI Desktop, but the same or better version of Power BI Desktop than I have. So we're kind of back in the old days of handing files around if we take this approach, but it is an option. That's why it's here for completeness. Another way we can share out with Power BI is to share specific reports and dashboards with individual users. Um, so you can essentially what you're doing here is granting access to that user to your resource and in your workspace in this particular case. They still need a Power BI Pro license. You can't just share it with anybody. Um, it's a very simple security model. It's user only. And they you can see what the options here are, are, are on the screen. You can control whether or not they could reshare it, et cetera. But it's very, uh, pretty much a, a, a narrow set of options. And you're given a URL that you could also hand out to people. So you could email this out to people or you could uh, send them a URL. So that's if you're only really going to want to use this feature if you're working within your personal workspace. So a workspace, and I've been using that term and without really defining it, a workspace is a, uh, a container that contains reports, it contains data sets, uh, it can contain data flows, and it contains dashboards. And a dashboard is a combination of items, or basically a collection of items, typically from our reports that have been deployed to that workspace. It's a grouping of, uh, uh, of assets. Um, and you can grant access to a workspace to individual users and or groups of users. So it's a lot, uh, lot stronger in this way. And it's a lot more granular in terms of what these people can do. Some could maybe edit, maybe some can view only, et cetera. Uh, and if you've heard of the concept, we'll talk about it here in just a second, the concept of Power BI apps, a workspace is the building block for an app. So uh, if you're going to work with apps, a workspace, so to start with actually, a workspace is one way to share the report uh, and uh, reports, the dashboards and the data sets. Uh, typically, if you're giving people membership access to this, they would be authors. So everybody in here would be able to author. Um, if you wanted to have a, a, a form of software design lifecycle management, 
Uh, you wanted to be able to deploy what's in your workspace to another group of users with a different security model. Uh, and you maybe also want to be able to work on the reports in, in behind the scenes while people are using the last version. You're going to want to use apps, a Power BI app. And a Power BI app is, at its heart, a deployed app. It's an instance of an app. Uh, it basically is a copy of the app that points back at the same data set but it's, uh, it's destined for a different group of users. And that's how you would deploy uh, workspaces to a larger audience. Um, and it does have some of that basic software design lifecycle capability. So you can change things back at the source. And then you know, when, it's, when it's appropriate, you can then publish those out. But all in, in, the, in the entire time, both the developers and the consumers, the end users are working with the same data set that's stored in the workspace. It also has, has the ability to, um, uh, for you to get in there and provide a custom navigation. But uh, of course, this also requires a pro license. And or, or, or if the users don't have a pro license, the uh, data must be stored within a, a dedicated or a premium capacity. Another way to share is use SharePoint or Teams. Being a SharePoint guy, I'm a bit of, bit, bit of a bigot there, so I always use SharePoint as an example. But it's the same basic principle. And you can go and get a code, we'll see how to do that here in just a second, um, that will allow you to embed items in, in a SharePoint in a web part. You can also use, uh, get a more generic code to allow you to embed this in a web page. Uh, you can also use that to embed into SharePoint if you don't want to use the, uh, the, the SharePoint uh, web part itself. Um, it's appropriate for sensitive data, it requires the end user to be authenticated, but of course it requires those end users to again, either have a pro license or for it to have been uh, published from a dedicated capacity. And of course, any of the viewers require access and that isn't automatically handled. So if I was to publish, um, uh, or if I was to put, publish a web part on a SharePoint page in one area and the users consuming that page do not have access to my backend report in Power BI, they will not see that report. That brings us to really the topic of the day, which is publish to web. When I publish to web, I'm publishing anonymously. The two terms, I'll use them interchangeably and they mean exactly the same thing. So I'm creating an anonymous copy of my report. When I publish to web and hand a UR, uh, the URL out to users, those users do not need a license, okay? Uh, you can only do this with reports. You cannot publish dashboards to the web. So you're gonna get a report, and that's it. And those users, of course, it's anonymous, so I don't know who they are, um, but you could probably figure out that they don't have to be granted access specifically. And it's a very, very easy, and it's a very powerful way to share public data, not organizational data. We're going to beat this point home over the next little while. Um, it is very appropriate in, in a lot of cases, and you can go onto the Power BI site. It's called the Data Stories Gallery today. Um, I can't remember what it was called, but uh, it's, it's had different names over time. And you can see there's, a, there's an image on the, uh, on the slide here of some of the reports that are available there. Uh, COVID's very popular, of course, right now in terms of you know, different ways of visualizing COVID data. But there's all kinds of things that you can just log on and look at and you know, get design ideas from, et cetera. And they have one thing in common. They're all using public data, data that anyone has access to. All right. It's kind of like the publishing story. I'm going to assume we've got we've had no questions so far. I haven't heard from Reza, so I'll I'll just keep on rolling, and uh, he'll let me know if, if if that's wrong. So now that we know what uh, what sharing is all about, and we know what uh, publish to web is all about, uh, first of all, we have to turn this on. If you're fairly new to Power BI, you will have to go and turn it on because now it's off by default. It wasn't. It hasn't for uh, for a very long time. It was on by default. And you can control whether or not your organization uses this at the tenant level or at the group level. So as an organization, if you, you know, if you don't want people to share out, oh, I don't know, your organization's data, you might consider turning this off uh, at first until you're able to educate people and then turning it on selectively for specific groups. Um, 
you can see here on the right hand side uh, the publish to web section first of all there's a there's a master radio switch enabled or disabled that's the tenant level setting i'm talking about i'll skip over the next one for a second come back to it you can see we can apply to the entire organization so i can turn it on for everybody that's the way i have it set up for myself but i don't necessarily recommend everyone do that or you can turn it on for specific security groups Power BI, anonymous publishers, something like that. So you don't have everybody willy-nilly creating anonymous uh, reports uh, from whatever they happen to be looking at. You can also do the reverse of that. You could have it turned on for everyone in the entire org organization, except for like a deny list. And, uh, um, um, a deny list is what I'm talking about. Um, and now I mentioned that it was on by default for a long time. You might want to go in there and start controlling things. You don't want any new reports. You know you've got a bunch of reports out there that are valid. You need to go and review them. But right now you just want to stop the bleeding if, if there's too much of this going on. You can go and then turn, uh, turn it on, but only for existing codes. And that's what that middle option there is for. And that's what I mean here by uh, you can disable it without disrupting the existing reports. Uh, sorry. Oh, yeah. A question, yep. uh, like one of the questions is that what the tenant means, which is, I think, good if we explain it because some people are still it is. Uh, are not aware of like what this environment is. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so a tenant is essentially when you log into Power BI, you're logging into your tenant. There's a, there's a URL at the top that will identify your tenant, but your tenant is essentially tied to your Azure Active Directory identity. Um, that identity is going to be part of an Azure Active Directory. And that directory is, in effect, the tenant. So if you're using uh, Microsoft 365 and SharePoint, uh, that's all using the same tenant. So Power BI is part of that tenant. So it essentially means everyone in your organization. Great. I hope that, Thank that answers you. it. Yep, no, that no problem at all. Perfect. Another question is that, can we create like two apps from the same workspace? I have two different reports in workspaces. I want to create two different apps for such, such scenario. You, it, if you have two different workspaces, you can certainly create two different apps. That is an excellent question. Can you create two different apps from the same workspace? And the answer to that, I believe, is no. Um, because you can only publish out, you say, you say publish an app, and there really is only one app. That it, You don't get asked a multiple, multiple which app, et cetera, et cetera. That said, I've never tried it. Um, but just from the way it's built, I believe the answer to that question is no. Do you know any differently, Reza? I don't know uh, that one. For, no, I think, sure. I think, yeah, exactly as you said. The the main thing is that like apps is per audience. If you have like two yeah. different reports for two different types of audience, so why not putting it into different workspaces to share yeah. the two different apps? I mean, that is a limitation that we can't have more yeah. than one app in a workspace, but I think that's yeah. probably by design. Yeah, I think so too. I think so too, yeah. Okay, thanks. At least if we're if if if, uh, if we're wrong, we're both wrong. How's that? <laughs> <laughs> right. Great. Thank you. Excellent. Uh, so yeah. So just uh, getting back to getting a handle on on um, on reports that have been published anonymously, there is a section in the admin portal where you can go in and see what embed codes. It's called embed codes, and you can see all of the embed codes that have been uh, published there. So if if you see anything that's scary, it looks like it might have. Um, data from inside the organization, you can go and get that turned off, um, get rid of it, talk to the user, et cetera, find out what's going on. But that's really all there is in terms of enablement and administration for anonymous reports. So let's talk a little bit about how to use it. So if you're viewing a report, and again, I stress, this has to be a report, not a dashboard. And the examples you're seeing here, by the way, are using the new Power BI interface, which has gone live. So if you're using the old one, you have to go and turn on the new experience. Um, but it, 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 again, it's using, it, it's available in both uh, in both environments. In the new experience, you'll see a little set of uh, um, uh, 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 ellipsis uh, in, in, the, uh, uh, in the toolbar at the top. I'm having trouble speaking today. I don't know what's wrong. Um, you, you open that up, there's an embed section, and then there's three possible ways to embed. If you want to pu uh, publish to the web, you're going to pick that option. We're going to see all three options here in just a minute. When you select publish to web, you're going to get a warning. Get a link or an embed code that you can include in a public website. And it basically is telling you uh, here that you should only use this with public data. Nice big warning that's going to scare people and probably, well, actually prevent them from reading it to tell you the truth. So 
Uh, then you go ahead and create the embed code. Then it gives you a scarier message. It's giving you a lot of warnings because what you're doing is actually quite serious. And again, we'll see why here in, in, in just a moment. But uh, once you do this and you hit the publish button, you will be given a URL. And that URL can be shared with anyone, anyone in your tenant, anyone in the world. So you can send that out and they will see a full screen Power BI report. Or you could choose the embed code and just paste that into a web, uh, web page. Uh, and that basically just contains the iframing you need to, to, to do that. That's kind of all there is to it. So if you would like to see an example of that, my uh, blog actually has an example. I did this um, post on how this all works a long time ago uh, and then just put this in there. It's a bit of a joke, but it's kind of fun because um, being a diver, I didn't really mention that in my interest screen, but that was me in the, in the picture. Um, one thing I'm very interested in is sharks, and there's a publicly available data set out there, the global shark attack file, that I have refreshed on a, on a daily basis. And I embed that report, it's public data, um, in um, on my blog. So there's a there's a tab at the top that says shark attacks worldwide. You can go there now and you can see an up-to-date uh, report on uh, shark attacks, but this is basically my blog. So you can see that's a Power BI report embedded in a web page anonymously. And this is a full screen version, not of the same report, but this is using our uh, Twitter. This was uh, from, from the Build Conference a, a couple of months ago. We're monitoring all the tweets for the Build Conference. And it looks and feels just like a Power BI report with some minor differences that we'll, uh, we'll touch on here in a second. But let's have a quick look at how this all works, how we can put all this stuff together. So we're gonna embed in SharePoint very quickly. We're gonna embed in a web page. Uh, this is regular embedding, secure embedding. Now we're gonna use publish to web in, uh, in uh, both of those uh, scenarios. So let's have a quick look. So here we have um, uh, Twitter monitor for Power BI. Uh, and that's up to date as of about two hours ago, I think, uh, using our Tigraph for Twitter product. This is running in um, my MVP tenant. So one way to, uh, to embed this stuff, let's say I wanted to go over here to SharePoint and embed this in, in, a, in a SharePoint page that I happen to have. So let's go over here. And I'm going to, let's go back here. I'm going to come up here into this ellipsis and I'm going to select embed SharePoint online. And the first, and bang, I immediately just get this URL that I can use. So I'm copying that, I'm hitting control C. And then I'm going to come over here to SharePoint and I'm going to just go over here, hit new page. I'm going to create a new SharePoint page as opposed to putting it into an existing one. And hopefully it responds to me. Come on, John. All right, I'm going to refresh this page and I'm going to try the same thing. Doesn't look like SharePoint is really liking me today. It's a simple, okay, I'm going to try and edit this page. Let's try and do that. Oh, come on. Oh, here we go. All right. So now we're creating, we're back to the new one. It just happens to be slow, I guess, today. So I'm going to create a new blank layout page. So I'm going to go ahead and create the page. I'm going to call it um, Power BI Twitter. And I'm just going to come down here and I'm going to add a new SharePoint web part. And in the search box at the top, I'm going to type in Power. Come down, select Power BI. And I'm going to add a report. By adding a report, I get the web part interface show up on the right hand side of my screen. It asked me to paste in the link. I'll go ahead and do that. Which page would I like to show? So I thought you saw the main page, but I could pick any of the uh, pages available in that report. I'm gonna go ahead with the main and I can decide whether or not to include the navigation pane, these page tabs along the bottom. I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And I'll just publish the page. And just like that, I've embedded that in, in a SharePoint page. Great. Now, I, all of those other secure things stand, right? I need to be, um, I need to be, have been granted access to Power BI for this to work. But if I have, I'm seeing my Power BI reporting concept, content context of my SharePoint page. And it's, of course, fully interactive. So I can click on things and see the page all cross filtered. Wonderful. All right. So let's go back here and do the same thing. But instead of picking SharePoint, let's go pick website or portal. Now, this is a good approach if you're going to use um, 
Uh, if you had a version of SharePoint that does not have that web part, an older version of SharePoint or on-premises SharePoint, this will work for that. I'm going to go ahead and embed it on a, uh, on a blog page. So I'm going to come down here and I'm going to uh, grab that A-frame code. And I'm going to come back up. This is actually my blog's WordPress. I'm going to add a quick new page. And hopefully it runs a little bit faster for me. My hopes are always dashed when I expect the machine to perform and I'm doing a demo. All right, so I'm going to punch in Power BI Twitter. And I'm using the new WordPress with the block editor, so I should just be able to go bang and paste in my iframe and go ahead and publish that. Give that a second. There's my URL. And in fact, you could uh, you could uh, go there yourselves now, right now. So I'll just open up a new tab over here, paste that in. And what we should see is power-bi-twitter is what it is. Once WordPress responds for it to me properly. It'd be a great time for questions if there are any more. Anyway, so you, we can see now here we got the whole report loading in. Actually, I pasted that twice, so we're seeing the report load in twice. But you get the general idea. We can embed this now on a public page. Now, I, this is a public page. How is this working? In fact, if you go there right now, it won't work for you. You'll see an error, but you will not have access to the content. I am logged in in this browser to Power BI, and I just happen to be going here um, myself, uh, uh, as myself, and, and I'm able to pass through. Let's come down here and open up now a, an in private window, which should not bring my credentials across, and go to the same page, see what happens. There we go. Please sign in to view the report. So I would need to provide my credentials if I didn't already have them. All right, so I'm gonna minimize that in private uh, window. And let's come back over here again to, to uh, Power BI. So if I wanna publish this thing for the entire world to see, I'm gonna have to come up here now, come down to embed, and finally come down to publish to web, public. And there's that warning I was talking about. I'm gonna go ahead and say, create an embed code. Yes, I'm gonna go ahead and publish it. It creates a code. I'm going to grab the iframe code. Come back up here. Sorry, come back to uh, this guy. I'm going to paste that in here now. Instead, I'm going to update that page. All right, so it should be updated now. And now if I come down here and come over to my in private window and refresh it, it's not refreshing properly. Uh, it's not the same page. I must not have republished it, so bear with me. Thought all I should have to do was update it, but I'm not sure why it is failing me. That is the right URL and it's only the, well, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm going to paste, I'm gonna do the, go back here to WordPress. I quickly create a new, well, try to quickly create a new page. All right, I'm gonna go add a new page. Call it PBI Anon. Paste this one in. Gonna double check that I've got the right one selected. Over here. No, that's not good. I didn't copy the right thing. One more attempt here, all right. That should do. 
Let's go ahead and publish this. And if this doesn't work, I'll ask you to trust me. All right, finally, yeah, okay, so I'm gonna just grab that URL. Come back down to my in private screen uh, window. And paste. Going to PBI and on now. Now we've got the right page. And there you see that report all rendered anonymously. And of course, it's completely interactive. So that's what Publish to Web is all about. Oh, one last thing I did want to show you uh, was the fact that I don't have to embed it in a page. If I come back up here again and I grab this URL instead, all I have to do is to come over here and move my team's presenting. Uh, oh, well, let's see here. Okay. Yeah, there we go. And punch in the URL. And you get a full screen experience. So you don't have to embed it in a page, but you can. That's really it. All right. So uh, let's come back uh, here and sorry, oh, we got one, a question. Yeah. One mm -hmm. question. Like uh, yeah. if the data source changes, like let's say we schedule the uh, data set to refresh, one of the questions yep. we get most often and ask. Uh, right now as well is that if uh, the data set refreshed, do, do people get access? Uh, do people see the new data even after the refresh with the published web? The refresh. The, the answer is yes, and the the more nuanced answer is that that's section five of this talk today. We we dive right into the detail of that and how that works and exactly what you can expect. So right. There are Thank some you. nuances. That yeah, no problem at all. No problem at all. So the next item. Yes, I took this picture. Um, so the next item is uh, to, to note here is if you haven't gotten that idea already, publish to web is not secure. I just handed this URL out to someone um, and that was a rather funky looking URL, but I just handed that out and anybody can now access that data. Um, you should, you know, you should kind of get the idea. Publish to web is the name. That means the whole web can see it. So that's fine, but it's tempting, isn't it? Right. I described all of the other sharing mechanisms before, and they all come with a cost. They all need a pro license. They all need dedicated capacity or premium, something like that. This one's free. It doesn't cost anything. So it's awfully tempting. And for a while, we didn't have that secure embed option, that second embed option. So if you had versions of SharePoint, for example, that did not have that web part, it was the only way you could embed Power BI content in there. So there, there is guidance out there from some people that say this is the right way to do it. It's not the right way to do it. But even if you're only publishing internally, um, and you'll see why um, why that is true uh, in just a second. Um, the other thing to note is some of these other uh, ways to share can be more difficult. This is simple. You get a URL, you hand it to someone, away you go. All right. But the one thing I want you to take away from today, if there's only one thing you remember, is only, I've said it a few times, haven't I already? You should only ever use publish to web with public data. And I'll show you why. Let's say I've published, um, I've published a, a Power BI report and, um, and I've, I've, I've embedded it in SharePoint internally. I don't hand this information out to anybody. It kind of doesn't matter because if you'll notice, the top of this screen here is app.powerbi.com. All of these published reports come from that domain. So I could go to, let's go to someplace like Google. I'm gonna to go to the google.ca because I'm Canadian. And I'm just gonna search for app.powerbi.com. And let's see what we can find. And immediately we see a bunch of these published because Google's indexing everything. It doesn't care if you've handed it out or not. So let's go COVID, of course, everywhere. So I'm going to just going to click on this one. And here's a report on uh, the Victoria. Oh, this is Australia, actually. Um, COVID in Victoria. This is a report. This is probably public data. This is probably a good use of published to web, but it might not be. Let's uh, let's go back and check out another one. Let's come down. I don't know. Let's go down to the bottom. Have a look here. 
and I never know what I'm going to get when I do this. So, uh, network and phone usage from someone. So I'm not sure. I think this is a yeah, uh, Edu Rome. So some educational institution has published this. Maybe that's innocuous. You never know. Oh, sorry, hit, hit forward there. Okay, now back. All right, but you know, just playing around. You can. You're. I'm basically, you know, like a voyeur here. I'm sitting here looking at other people's data. This is in Russian. <laughs> I don't know if this is important or not. I don't know if this is scary or not. I know it's up to date. There's 2020 stuff, and I can interact with it. And it's all gonna gonna work. But what is it? I could be a little more insidious and come back up here to my search. And maybe throw in something like I don't know, profit, because that's a nice financial term. I'm going to open up, I don't know, this one, quarter, because it's got a different name. And I can see this is fairly up-to-date data with profit and expenditure uh, categories for somebody I don't know who. They haven't identified themselves here so far. But let me see. Uh, I don't know who. Oh, well, here are some customer names. Now, we're starting to get into some you know, dodgy territory. This is, might be sensitive data. Someone has published this. This is in the, this is in the real world. Um, what, I'm going to punch, uh, punch up another one here, month. And you can see we've got a sales and profit for the Intellitics in, 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 Hub Technology Corporation. This is a real company. I, I searched this up just before we started to, to make sure. But yeah, you can see some uh, some financial numbers. Um, I don't know for sure if this was a demo or not, uh, or if it's real data. I, th I think it might be real data, just looking at it. But this is the danger. It's discoverable. It doesn't matter if you intended to. And to show you how, dis how discoverable this is, um, a fellow MVP named D Dave Reuters out of the Netherlands has actually put together an anonymous published report of anonymous, pu non anonymous published reports and use the Bing API to pull all of these things together, basically do what I was just doing in a systematic way and refresh it. And there's some interesting things in here. Um, I've uh, got one selected here, but if I come up here, let's have a look at uh, Telstra. And we see there's a report from Telstra. Telstra's um, the Australian phone company. And here you can see a uh, number of calls per day, average uh, uh, transfer and megabytes per day. This is for uh, Brisbane. So and someone's published this report, shared it with someone using the anonymous uh, feature. Or let's come back to Dave's master report and have a look at, I don't know, collaboration. Let's have a look at that guy. Now, this is interesting. I picked collaboration. And it says this content isn't available. Chances are somebody published it and somebody else turned that feature off. And that's what happens when you turn the feature off. Or maybe we come down here and pick revenue. So there's all kinds of interesting things you can learn just be, uh, by being out there. And this is uh, patient volume, year to date size by percent change by total pay received for some healthcare organization in Victoria, British Columbia. So again, probably some sensitive data that someone has published out here. That's why we don't want anyone to use publish to web with internal data. It is appropriate for demo data. It is appropriate for public data, but it is not appropriate for internal data. Okay. And let's get the slides going again. So if you'd like to see that for yourself, uh, it's called Dave's Gallery of Public Reports. Uh, you can search, uh, put, punch that into Google if you like. Uh, there's the URL for it right there. Uh, or you can grab that QR code in the upper right-hand corner and uh, get the whole deck and you'll have it as well. All right. So now I just want to cover off some of the differences between the reports you'll see in the Power BI service and an anonymous report. To start with, you don't get a filter pane with an anonymous report. You can see on the left-hand side, it's highlighted in red, the filter pane. Uh, a designer will uh, set up what goes in the filter pane so you can filter re your report by any of these items. That does not exist in, a, uh, in, a, in an anonymously published report. What does exist are slicers. So you can see the same slicer pane for the same report exists on both sides of the, of the screen here as well. So all of your filtering, you're gonna have to do through slicers anonymously. It's really that simple. If you have a multiple page report, it looks different. 
Uh, the, the multiple pages in the service are a lot more discoverable. They show up along the left-hand side of the report unless you collapse that pane and you can always reopen it. Um, but you do not get that pane uh, with the anonymous report. You just get the main uh, report layout. But what you do get along the bottom is a little bar, Microsoft Power BI, links to Twitter, et cetera. And in the middle, you get a little one of eight and you can cycle through the pages that way or you can select the middle and it will bring up the names of the pages that way and you can navigate them between them there. But you have to know that that exists. And I've had users um, you know, not know that there's multiple pages. It's not as discoverable as it is in the service. And there are a number of features that you cannot use anonymously. Uh, to start with, a big one is direct query. Uh, direct query is a way to avoid the cache of data altogether in the service and go straight to the source with every render of the report. Um, that is not available at all anonymously. So you can take that out of the picture. Uh, composite models, the ability to mix imported, uh, uh, imported data sets and direct query data sets. Well, it uses direct query, doesn't it? So boom, their uh, composite models are not supported. Neither are aggregations which rely on composite models. Automatic page refresh, that's the ability to um, not have hands on keyboard or anything and have your page automatically refresh and get fetch data um, from the source. Again, that's a direct query capability, therefore you can't use it with, uh, with uh, anonymous reports. Your visuals are all cached for one hour. So that's beginning to answer the question we, we, uh, we just recently had, and we're gonna dive into it more in the section. Uh, in the next uh, section. But with other reports, uh, you can hit re hit the refresh button and have your report data synchronized with what's in the uh, your, your underlying data set. That's not true for anonymous report. They're going to be cached for one hour at the very least. Filter parameters. In the service, you can pass in through the URL various filter parameters. Let's say I want to filter a report by company. At the end of my URL, I would pass in question mark, company name equals, and then the value of the company name. You can't do that with anonymous reports. And then finally, direct connect reports are supported, uh, but in a limited way. Uh, what's a direct connect report? When I publish a PBIX or a Power BI report into the service, I can then start a new PBIX file, another Power BI report, and connect to the data set that's in the service without having to go through the data import and the data preparation, et cetera, et cetera. So I can have two reports hanging off the same data set. That, so that second one is a direct connected report. That does work, but in the service generally, you can connect to data sets in any workspace. If you're going to publish anonymously, the report and the source data set have to be in the same workspace. I found that out the hard way. All right, now we're gonna talk about data latency or, or refresh, if you will. To start with, this is essentially how um, the service works. A user accesses a report that is in the service that's coming in from the right-hand side here with the green dotted line. That report is fed from the data set that is under, uh, underneath it, that's here in green. And then on a scheduled basis, that data set gets updated from whatever its data source might happen to be, if it's on-prem through a gateway or if it's from the cloud directly. But we're always working from the report directly to that data set. Anonymously is different. Anonymous gets its own space uh, in the service. Uh, App.powerbi.com, it's a different area in there. So with it, when a user accesses the anonymous report, they come in and hits the, hit the anonymous interface and then that report is essentially copied in to that area. And then subsequent queries of that report all are served directly out of that area without going back to that, that data set that's in the service. That lives for one hour. So when someone hits the report, it does not get refreshed for a full hour after that. Doesn't matter what's going on behind the scenes. That, that, that report stays static for an hour. After an hour, that fetch process and copy is repeated. So whatever the state of the re uh, report is at that point in time, that's what gets brought out into the, uh, into the anonymous area. I hope that makes sense. What that means is between data source change and the user, there are, up to, uh, there are between two and three refresh steps. It depends on whether or not you use a data warehouse as well. 
Uh, so you'd go source to warehouse to Power BI data set, then ultimately to that anonymous cache of the report. And all those things would have to happen. We're gonna, we're gonna go on the basis in, in our next slide of, of just having two. You can schedule when your data set is refreshed, right? In the pro or shared service, that's up to eight times a day. In the dedicated, uh, dedicated service uh, premium, it's up to 48 times per day. Uh, as mentioned, that report refresh is gonna be at least an hour from the last refresh. And if a user doesn't use that report, it won't get automatically refreshed. So, so I use a report, nothing happens. One hour expires, that report does not get copied from the source. It waits for someone else to come along and hit it, and then it copies that out there. And then that report will live for an hour. So it's not like there's this constant um, uh, process going on. <coughs> So what does that mean? If we're in the shared capacity, um, it's 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 hard to wrap your head around this. But if the um, if if the if a last sorry if if a user accesses, <laughs> it's very very hard to explain. If if I access a report and it's uh, it, 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 right before uh, a refresh is scheduled in the pro service, and I have scheduled reports throughout the day. That means you know, eight times a day, that, uh, that evenly spaced, that's every three hours. Um, if I've done that, and then uh, the, 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 sorry, the refresh finished, and then I, uh, sorry, the refresh, just before the refresh start, I, I refreshed my, my anonymous report. That means I've had three hours of latency uh, on the report that I've gotten, plus it will live for one hour. So my maximum latency in that scenario is four hours, okay? In dedicated capacity, I can do it 48 times a day, that's every half an hour. That means that my maximum latency could be up to one and a half hours and a minimum of one half hour. I hope that makes sense. It's hard to explain. All right, another limitation you get with anonymous report is that there is no audit log. In the Power BI service, every activity gets logged um, in the uh, in the compliance center. So you can see when a report was viewed, when a report was edited, when a report was refreshed, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. None of that happens for anonymous access. You don't have any indication of your usage uh, for anonymous reports. All right. And it looks like we come, might come in a couple of minutes early today. So uh, just to wrap it all up, I think I've said this a few times, but only use this feature with a public data. It's a very powerful feature. I use it very extensively with our TIEGRAPH for Twitter product. So that's something you've seen here uh, in a couple of forums. We do this for events. If you're holding a, an event, you'd like to track the tw uh, Twitter traffic around it, um, let me know. Uh, we'll probably track it for you for free if it's a if it's a uh, community-based event. Um, if you're going to use this feature, you really do want to understand what its limitations are, or otherwise you might, might wind up building something that you can't use. You really should understand that data latency so you know what to expect. Um, and again, set expectations uh, accordingly. But uh, if your scenario meets all of these criteria, go ahead and tell those data stories, submit them to the gallery for Power BI. They may just get featured uh, at some point in time as well. So with that, I will wrap. I will. I know Rez has been popping in with a couple of questions, but uh, this would be a very good time to come, uh, hit me with any that you haven't thought of already. Great, fantastic. Thank you for oh, uh, thank all the you. explanation, especially uh, we can say like the deep dive part of the uh, schedule refresh, especially when it works with the uh, uh, published to web, which is yeah. great. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, so uh, yeah, those questions that we had already discussed it. Uh, I don't see any other questions yet for now, but usually we are like uh, a minute behind, so we might just <laughs> <laughs> chat we'll, about we'll one of the. Yeah, Talk about the chat weather. about one of the things uh, while seeing if there is any questions. One of the sure. things I get a lot from uh, customers is they ask like there is uh, like secure embed, the one that you showed that yes. you embedded in a website, but people have to log in with their account and see it. And yes. we also have something uh, which is um, the uh, Power BI embedded. A lot of time I get questions from people ah. that what is the difference between these? 
So Power BI Embedded is something a developer would use, an ISV would use, and something we use. So we have a SaaS version, um, software as a service version of our TIEGRAPH product. Uh, so typically when you buy TIEGRAPH, you'll have a Power BI instance, we give you reports. Uh, that's really how our product is delivered is through Power BI. Um, but we have customers that don't have Power BI, and how do we serve them? Well, as a developer, we can essentially embed Power BI reports inside of our app, an application that we have in our Azure tenant. So we as a vendor are, are supplying this. And in behind the scenes there are, is our Power BI tenant. We're using a dedicated capacity. You need to use a dedicated capacity to use Power BI embedded. Yeah, the terminology is terrible, especially when you get into the <laughs> SKU names. Uh, EM is one of the SKU names, and that means embedding. It doesn't mean embed ed. If you're going to use embed ed, you want to use an ASKU, but that's a different story. <laughs> so uh, if it, it, it's uh, Power BI embedded is a dev uh, is a developer um, platform, if you will, and it and it's basically says the developer will bring the Power BI to the game as opposed to the customer. Um, but when you're embedding, and that's how I like to uh, separate the two: embedded versus embedding. Those were the features I was showing. I was showing you embedding features. How can you take a Power BI report in your tenant and embed that in your content? Great, thank you, cool. and uh, thanks for explaining that. Um, no problem. We have some questions about report server uh, sessions later on. We'll make sure that we have a session later on mm -hmm. about Power BI report server and the role level security in that scenario yeah we'll we'll see how we can have a session on so, that yep and that's something i didn't include in my slides right row level security isn't supported in here of course it isn't because we don't know who you are um <laughs> so we yeah yeah but but it, it, it probably i should add that into my slides so fair enough great thank you <laughs> uh so uh yep uh, we might get some questions later on in this uh youtube video in the description below so we'll watch it and if there's any questions we'll send it to you for sure please do uh, there were questions about getting the slide deck which i'll guess you'll send it to me and i'll share it down in yeah, the description it's here that, it, it's that url i'll just go back a slide or two shall i uh, right there uh link.tigraph.com slash presentation hopefully you can uh, see it i think my, yeah, my, my your, toolbar your, might be cutting your it desktop bar is like on top uh, of it uh, right now it is I don't <laughs> but, I'll, but i'll share it away. yeah <laughs> yeah no i'll problem. share it for sure uh awesome thank you for your time thank you everyone for watching us um until the next uh week we wish you to be safe and happy uh and any last words john uh, I'm good. Thanks, everybody, for, for tuning in. I hope that this was of some value to some folks. Great. Thank you. Bye. Take care. Bye-bye.